Welcome back to Salon Exit. Today we're talking with Adam David Taylor, an artist of uh, working many like mediums, ju not just painting. Uh, used to be also a musician, what it, I just found out, which is even more interesting. Is that correct? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, well, I, I really like that part <laughs> as well. <laughs> so, um, thank you first of all for accepting the invitation to be interviewed. I'm really pleased uh, and honored. Um, so maybe the first question I would like to ask you, what made you an artist? Or if to put it maybe differently, when did you realize that you are an artist? If there has been like, it's whether it's been a process or realization certain or like a process that made you an artist yeah i'm not sure good question um yeah very good question <laughs> and start with a difficult question whether this means i'm an artist or not i always struggled with um with, with doing normal jobs if you know what i mean i was yeah, i was never any good at anything um at school i was terrible at, I was, uh, at school i was good at art I was, I was, art was something that always interested me. Okay. Um, I always enjoyed drawing and painting and sort of more creative things. Mm -hmm. um, probably led into music a bit, I guess. I don't know. It wasn't like a, at a certain point you said, like, I'm an artist. It was more like a gradual realisation. Kind of... Yeah, I think so. I never, I certainly never aimed to become an artist. I, in fact, growing up, I was never... Um, introduced to art or paintings i remember the first time the first time i'd ever been i grew up in yeah to go back i grew up in a, a medium-sized small to medium-sized town called shrewsbury um oh. uh, other than i like drawing sort of cartoon type drawings that i'd see on television i knew nothing about art nothing about painters and i remember with art college going to london for the first time when i was 17 and going to an art museum i'd never seen I'd never started think I'd seen a painting up until then, you know, other than what other kids were doing at school. Yeah, I, I knew nothing. My, my sort of family and, and sort of parents were, were not from that sort of background. But you had to find your way around this. Basically, art class was the only thing I enjoyed at school. I hated school. And that was the only thing I liked. And then I just sort of carried on and, and went to art college and, um, yeah, just kept going with that. Uh, I love your paintings, obviously. And I especially love the, like, if I had to pinpoint one thing about, like, what brought my attention to your painting would be the, 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 blunt, uh, the, the blend of the, of the colors you're using. And even more so, I would say that when you create some, some of the details of your painting, like brush strokes of, or other forms that are centerpieces of your paintings, uh, to me, uh, as if on a stage that's like carefully molded uh, into this refined material, and that is not just the color, uh, which I thought thought it, would be, it was really interesting. Can you tell me something about your practice from the aspect of how did you arrive at your current style? If if you yeah okay yeah good question. So the, most of my paintings at the moment have that sort of blue sort of background if you might have noticed and I think that came from always being taught to start with a sort of ground so you've got the canvas I paint on boards rather than canvas it's okay it's either it's either board or aluminium and um, for the larger pieces I use aluminium oh um, that's interesting yeah I, I, I quite like the um the flatness of the aluminium it's so um how does paint so, interact with with aluminium in terms of sorry for that like technical question but how does it interact with you know paints are usually uh, are rarely that kind of sticky to different materials is aluminium something too hard to work with no it's, it's <laughs> you think it would be you think it's so shiny but once you uh, you give it a sanding down oh. and um, create a bit of a key to it and then the paint sticks on lovely it's really nice and I like not to be too boring, but I like the fact that at least a really smooth surface is really nice. I like the fact it doesn't, um, with some of the larger works I have, I've had problems with them warping. Mm -hmm. So if, if perhaps someone puts it onto a damp wall or something, they can, being wood, it's, it, you know, with moisture and that sort of thing can warp. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it doesn't. So yeah, basically, sorry to answer your question. Um, <laughs> You, you need to, you, with painting, you're taught to start with the ground. And if it's a landscape, you, you're taught to use an oxide or like a, 
a dark brown, something like that. And um, I, I don't know what made me start doing it, but I just, I started laying this blue down. So all the paintings would start with prime it and then it would have that sort of duck eggy, turquoisey blue down. Okay. And then I would go from there. And I, what I quite like about the blue to me is although my work is abstract, it's sort of based in the landscape and mm. it's, it's cold in, in the UK, isn't it? It's freaking cold mm. most of the year. I quite like the blue sort of bright colours don't kind of suit the... The environment. Yeah, it captures the sort of cold and the, the bleakness in mm. a way. To me, mm, it's back to a, a job I did do for a long time was um, I got a job um, working, I was really lucky and got a job working for um, a foraging company which supplies like wild food, that sort of thing, to um, restaurants. So it meant that all day long, I was outside picking wild food mm -hmm. for these restaurants. So in the winter, you have to pick in the freezing cold all day long, in the rain, which doesn't sound so nice now on, <laughs> on reflection. But it, it kind of, I think it's influenced my work. I do So basically, I do that by day, and then in the evening, I'd be painting. And I think just, just being out in the cold, and, and anyone can go for a walk, for example, but the fact you're you're forced to be out there working with the rain lashing down, I think it's sort of in in a horrible way influenced my work. You know, kind of horrible when you're doing it, but then when you get back, it kind of you know what I mean. That's a beautiful realization. If, if that right? makes sense, yeah, yeah, it definitely lost. It's like on a, such a deep level, like it embedded itself within it within your kind of artistic. I, th I artistic think so. Psyche. Yeah, you you find because you were picking these. A lot of a lot of the stuff I was picking is used to go to sort of Michelin starred restaurants and that sort of um, thing. So everything had to be perfect. And you would find you would complete you you wouldn't you would zone out of where you were and you'd be just picking this thing and all this stuff would be going on around you. And I I don't know whether it leads into my work. I'm not sure. Yeah. But some of the darkness and the there is some sort of meditation to it, and I think def it definitely translates vi very visibly and into your into your work your practice the style you currently having yeah oh well, yeah yeah thank you i think I, I i quite like the idea of a um although it's abstract work i quite like like the feeling of a, a space without people in it it's mm. just this kind of land or or area that's not that's mm. not occupied by by people i think a, 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 perhaps a painting that feels lonely you definitely you reminded me about about the times when you're a kid and you're picking something on like uh, pebbles on the beach, you're in the woods and just like picking something that interests you, like picks your attention. You feel really in zone, but at the same time creative in a way because you're kind of selecting the, the, the nature yourself. So it's really, really artistic experience to look at it this way. Oh, great. Well, thank you. That makes me happy. Good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I think to, to talk about that a little bit, I like the way as a child or, you know, an older child, you can spend time in all these places. And then as you get older, life gets in the way. You, you don't perhaps spend that same sort of time you would skimming stones or, yeah. you know, spending that sort of time with the environment, exactly. is, is my opinion. Yeah. And a lot of the time, when you get to my age, if you are just to just spend time skimming stones or something you feel uncomfortable because you feel like it's 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 not not cool do you know what i mean yeah definitely yeah yeah it feels like people might think what's going on here <laughs> it's uh yeah you're building tree houses and things like that as a yeah. as a child it's that innocence that you can't quite do when you're an adult so yeah. maybe my painting is a big escape isn't to that yeah that's really something like when you're when you're a kid, you don't have the the kind of the idea of time really. You don't oh you don't don't really care about it. When you're mm -hmm. an adult, you go to a beach. It's like okay, I'll, I'll force myself to go on a beach, then pick some pebbles. But at the same time, at the back of your head is like oh, I need to go there. I need to do this. So <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And you worry what other people think that are around you. And yeah, yeah. yeah. I had this. <laughs> uh, I had this like a uh, follow up to this question because. I'm really interested in how different uh, interest in all natures that artists have influence their practice. Do you think that music influence your your art, like your current art, or it's something that's 
Uh, yeah, I think it did. The one massive difference is when I was in a ba- when I was making music, I was in a band with two or three other people, and that's a big difference because there's something quite nice and frustrating about bouncing off other people. Whereas obviously with painting, I'm by myself, so um, it's different in that way. But it's similar, to, very similar. I notice in the way that when you're making music, a lot of it, especially when it comes to recording. You're taking things away all the time. You're adding things, taking them away. And that's very similar to the painting process that I do. It's trying to make something as minimal as possible, I think. With, with, with our band, we're obsessed with trying to make the sound as live as possible, not to do too many added extras and overdubs, you call it. And I think it's the same with the painting. Try and get it to the, the minimum it can be. I think it all uses the same sort of thought process, I think. Well, when you see, this is getting really boring and nerdy, I know nothing about recording, but when I've been recorded by um, sound engineers, you see it on the computer and it prints what you've recorded on guitar as like a, a line and the bass is on a line and the drums are on a line. It's almost like a, a picture and he edits it in that way. And, and uh, The music and the, the, the visuals, they all mix to a certain degree and that's how yeah. you come up with abstract, for example, work. Yeah. yeah, I think it's true. I think um, where the songs come from and where the painting comes from are the same place. It's it's a weird. Where do they come from? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> now that we know a little bit about your, your, your kind of practice and approach, I would say, uh, to... <clears throat> I'd like to go to the, uh, the, the main painting. So I chose this painting because of it's clarity basically that brought my attention uh, especially there is some sort of kind of like a zen feeling to it uh, with the visuals and can you tell me a little bit more about the kind of process behind this painting so maybe mediums or whatever you you think it's worth mentioning yeah so like i said before i think that one that particular piece is on board i had a i basically use for the the base layer is enamel mixed with oil paint into like a sort of, it's, it's like a kind of duck eggy blue, if that makes sense, like mm-hmm. a greeny blue. And I, it gets two layers of that. And then on top of that, I rub on this stuff called bitumen. It's basically the stuff you use for roofs. It's... Um, Never heard of this. Felt roofs are on roads. It's like, it's that kind of stuff. And then I cover the whole thing with that. And then with a rag and some white spirit, I sort of rub it off and it kind of, gives it this 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 beautiful sort of finish yeah. and then I then start painting with oils then and it's a case of painting something looks terrible rub it off with rags paint something else rub it off with rags um I often use just brushes you would use to to paint the house rather than really expensive artist brushes yeah. I maybe have two expensive artist brushes the rest are just lots of um, you know yeah. cheap art is about um, fun yeah. yeah, 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 and ju- just experimenting. Um, I probably use a rag as, as much as I use a paintbrush, if that makes sense, you know, like an old rag to rub away. And, and kind of some parts of it that I do rub away, if I leave bits, can end up quite nice, If you, and they can add to something else. And it's just basically one massive argument um, with myself in a room for two hours or so. so. I was going to say, sometimes at the end of it, I come out with um, something I'm really happy with, and then sometimes... <laughs> <laughs> I'm really in bad mood. It's basically you can see in what mood you you actually were during the during the yeah. painting of of uh, the bad moods ones often get wiped off yeah. and don't end up as paintings. Yeah. <laughs> now, may, maybe the ones that are revealing the most could be you know the most. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think the, the paint the painting you've chose um, is quite minimal, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I think there's two segments, to, one side and the other side. Yeah, to me, there's often, especially if it's a large painting, there's often a battle with me that um, when they're ever so minimal, I I worry that they justify being on such a large um, scale sometimes and I get myself in a right um, situation. But I, I often, I'll paint them and then they'll, in fact, show sure show you. Oh, they're right behind us. So basically, I I bring them home 
and I lived with them for a couple of um, a couple of weeks because often I think I'm um, I'm a sucker for the new stuff's the best. Mm-hmm. So I immediately think whatever I've I've done is is the most recent is the best, and then if I leave it for a couple of weeks, I'll suddenly think oh, actually no, I just I just so so they they have this kind of purgatory where they <laughs> once I've painted it, <laughs> they stay in my house for a while, and I just I I've, often I'll be watching television and they'll be in the corner. I just keep looking at them, and it will it, it could take me two or three weeks to work out if they're any good or not. At what point do you finally decide that painting is finished? Do you, is, does it vary? Yeah, in the in the studio, very quickly sometimes. Mm-hmm. In fact, sometimes I can I can do a painting that will take me I don't know six hours and drive me to hell, and then I can do a painting that will take I don't know half an hour or something, and, you, and they're the ones you feel guilty about. You're thinking, why is it why does it take so um, so little time? But then. The longer time is when I bring it into the house and I live with it for a bit and I work out whether it's any good or not but by kind of looking at it every night and okay. and maybe after after a month I might think it's awful. Yeah. It's, it's always the next the, the, the good test is I was I mainly paint at night so normally now I'd be painting and then the good test is I'll think something's wonderful yeah. and then go to bed wake up the next morning come down look at it and think God damn that's awful <laughs> and something happens in the night I don't know what happens in the night. And um, you look at it and you're thinking, yeah. You sleep, you sleep on it and then it, it changes. <laughs> sleep on it and then the fairies come and they change it. And then, <laughs> yeah, something happens. Do you change the paintings once they go out of your um, studio or they... The ones that aren't, and this happens a lot, the ones that aren't to my satisfaction get painted over. It will go straight again. It's quite a long process because with the, the enamel paint takes a day to dry. So I have to do one layer of enamel day to dry, another layer of enamel, day to dry, and then it then gets the bitumen layer again. So a mess up, yeah, you set yourself back a week or so. I, I try and make a lot of boards. I've got lots of different paintings happening all at the same time, so I'm not just waiting. Um, I have another pick uh, that I kind of thought was interesting when I was going through your other paintings. I, I didn't choose them to be the main painting, but I nevertheless I found them quite interesting. The one, the paint, the ones with the kind of a collages that you add. Is it postcards? Yeah, I think the the postcards. Yes. Okay, I know what they are. Yeah. So I was interested. Yeah, yeah I was interested in uh, why is it that you are adding those? How is it that you decided on adding such a complex structure to those really peaceful and uh, although lively paintings? Yeah, I. It was it was around Christmas and I was really busy with things, so I thought it'd be nice to create because um, I didn't have so much time to create some very small. They're, they're A5, which is oh, okay. they're tiny, and the the collage is a stamp, you know, mm-hmm. like, like on a letter. And I found a book of old stamps from the early '80s, something like that. And I thought it was an interesting idea that, like, you get a postcard from somewhere mm-hmm. to do an abstract. I don't know what seascape landscape it was. It was an abstract something, and called them postcards from Wales. Mm-hmm. So it had a, a stamp on it, and the stamp would. I put the stamp on first, and that would give me a sort of starting point for the painting. Perhaps the stamp had a bit of red in it or orange, and have to sort of. I quite like the some I really struggle with, but I quite like the way it forced me to react to this foreign object. It was something that wasn't mine. It was there, and I had to. It was often ugly in the composition. I had to sort of. Do something to accommodate it. I, I also, the fact they were called postcards from Wales, I quite like the way that, um, although I've lived here for getting on 20 years now, um, mm-hmm. it, it felt like it was a, a postcard back to my old life, if that makes sense. You know, like you send postcards back to you. My family uh, live in England, for example, so it was that kind of, you get a postcard from Wales, that was a sort okay, of... A time like, capsule to the, to the past. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and the fact that they are all old stamps. Yeah, beautiful idea. Yeah, yeah, I did. I think I did about fifteen of them. Oh, okay, so even though you're creating this uh, rather defined at this point style, you like still experimenting, just jumping to different kind of ideas and grabbing them without just like limiting yourself in terms of creating. It's it's probably I probably think about this more, for example, than um, people look at my work, but I feel sometimes. You get stuck. You, I don't want to repeat myself too many times, if you know what I mean. Pushing an idea 
to, to, the, to the point to just keep pushing and pushing and pushing it. There's something quite nice about that. But at the same time, I think to keep the person doing it interested and the people that like your work interest, you have to sort of challenge yourself as well, I think. So it was, yeah, it's probably an element of that. So maybe for the last question, I will yeah. go a little bit, or maybe more than a little bit philosophical and ask you okay. whether sometimes you ponder what art is very abstract and undefined question which you know some people even don't want to really ask because it's such a vague idea for everyone something different but do you sometimes find yourself you know why creating thinking of what 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 is it that i'm doing <clears throat> yeah um i'm making something that no one asked me to make and something that no one necessarily oh. wants it's a weird one isn't it yeah for what reason um it's it's a weird one um if you think about it too much um you'll probably go mad i imagine yeah. <laughs> um, if you like anything, i must be careful of asking this question <laughs> what's what's the point in anything if, if you overthink something sometimes things are better just get, if you overthink about them you um that's the way to go so, yeah yeah we well thank it. you very much thank you very much yeah. uh, have a nice evening and yeah, yeah you too